Hi, it's IntensiveCareHotline.com where we instantly improve the lives of families of critically ill patients in intensive care so that you can have real power, real control and so that you can influence decision making even if you're not a doctor or a nurse in intensive care. This is another episode of Your Questions Answered and in this week's episode I want to answer and I want to explain to you why your critically ill loved one might need dialysis or a kidney machine or hemofiltration for kidney failure and is having a dialysis machine attached to them. With all the challenges that you are already dealing with whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, you might now have been told or you might have seen that your critically ill loved one has been attached to a dialysis machine or a kidney machine. This generally means that your critically ill loved one has gone into kidney failure and it means that your loved one's kidneys have stopped working properly. Therefore, your critically ill loved one requires a form of kidney replacement therapy so that the function of the kidney can be replaced. This is what the dialysis or kidney, machi kidney machine is doing. In essence, it's replacing the function of the kidneys. Your next question probably is, what has led to the kidneys working properly? There are a number of factors that lead to acute kidney failure. Some of those reasons are caused by the therapy in intensive care and some of them are caused by the disease process of your loved one. The most common reasons for kidney failure in intensive care are low blood volume and therefore insufficient blood supply to the kidneys due to blood loss, bleeding, mainly after surgery or after traumatic accidents, abnormal or insufficient blood flow to and from the kidneys due to obstruction of the renal artery or vein, dehydration from loss of body fluids due to insufficient fluid intake or lo loss of such through vomiting, diarrhea, sweating or fever, sepsis which is the overwhelm of the body's immune system from an infection and therefore causes inflammation and shutdown of the kidneys. Rhabdomyolysis. In rhabdomyolysis there is significant muscle breakdown in the body and the damaged muscle fibers clog or obstruct the filtering system of the kidneys. This is usually a result of severe trauma, crush injuries and burns. Heart failure after open heart surgery, heart attack, cardiac arrest, cardiomyopathy due to insufficient blood supply, blood perfusion to the kidneys. Poorly controlled diabetes, high blood sugar and poorly controlled high blood pressure can cause kidney failure as well. These are the most common reasons for going into kidney failure in intensive care. The list is not exhaustive, however the list presents the most common reasons for kidney failure in intensive care. There are other reasons why patients in intensive care can go into renal failure and require the dialysis machine. However, the reasons below are no major reasons for kidney failure in intensive care. Acute glomerulonephritis or inflammation of the kidney filtering system. Obstruction of the bladder or the ureters can cause back pressure because the kidneys continue to produce urine but the obstruction acts like a dam and urine backs up into the kidneys. When the pressure increases high enough the kidneys are damaged and shut down. Now the signs and symptoms of your critically loved one having gone into renal failure are as follows. Low urine output, edema or the swelling of feet, ankles and the pelvic region, high potassium levels in the blood and the kidney's inability to clear out potassium. Increased urea and creatinine, which are specific kidney markers in blood results. If the urea level is climbing too high, signs of confusion and drowsiness may be present. After your critically ill loved one has been diagnosed with acute kidney failure, the next step is to try a diuretic drug, a drug that promotes the production of urine such as frusamide or Lasix to increase urine output. If the frusamide or Lasix doesn't work, then your loved one is likely to have the dialysis machine attached to them in order to completely replace the function of the kidneys. 
once the decision has been made to commence renal replacement therapy or the dialysis machine, the next steps are to insert a dialysis catheter into your loved one's groin, shoulder or neck into one of the large veins. Once the dialysis catheter has been inserted, the dialysis therapy can be commenced. Initially, it is the main goal to remove excess fluids from your loved one's body and reduce the edema and also to get potassium, urea and creatinine levels back to normal. This can take quite a while and it can take up to a few days and depending on the causes of the kidney failure can sometimes take weeks. With urea and creatinine, the specific kidney markers in the blood, coming down and coming back to normal, the kidneys should start to slowly but surely work again and produce urine. The next steps then are to take your loved one off the kidney machine and see whether your loved one starts to produce urine. If that's the case, then the renal replacement therapy has been effective and achieved its goal. In other cases, the kidney machine may have been taken off and your critically ill loved one doesn't show any signs of producing urine and therefore the dialysis machine needs to go back and more fluids need to be removed until the kidneys start working again. So I hope this gives you more insight and if you have a question that you want to have answered, please send an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com and we'll answer your question within 24 hours. In next week's episode, I want to, want to continue this series by explaining how long your critically ill loved one can stay on a dialysis machine and also what's happening if your loved one needs dialysis outside of intensive care. For more information and for more in-depth insight that you must know whilst your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, download your free Instant Impact Report now. In the free Instant Impact Report, you'll learn how to speak the secret intensive care language so that the doctors and the nurses know straight away that you are an insider and that you know and understand what's really happening in intensive care. In this free report, you'll also discover how to ask the doctors and the nurses the right questions, how to eliminate fear, frustration, stress, struggle and vulnerability, five killer tips and strategies helping you to get the right on the right path to control power and influence in your situation. You will get behind the scenes insight so that you know and understand what's really happening and how you need to manage doctors and nurses in intensive care and it's not what you think. With your free incident impact report you'll also get four other free reports and the reports you will be receiving are the six questions you need to ask the most senior doctor in intensive care, 10 things you didn't know doctors and nurses are talking about while you're not at the bedside with your loved one, the seven answers to the seven most frequently asked questions if your loved one is critically ill in intensive care, nine myths of being a critically ill patient in intensive care. Thank you for tuning into this week's blog and I'll see you again in another update next week. Make sure you also check out our blog section or send me an email to support at intensivecarehotline.com. This is Patrick Hutzel from intensivecarehotline.com and I'll see you again next week with another update.